Hey guys, how are you going and welcome to a 16th Svelte tutorial. This one is going to be on bind groups and also select bindings. Okay, so it's kind of like a follow-up to the previous video. Okay, so um, in this one, like I said, we're going to cover bind groups. So what I mean by bind groups is essentially uh, you can use it in a way to support uh, radio input fields and also multiple, uh, um, you know, selected checkboxes. Okay, so Let's have a quick look at an example. So, inside of these scripts, we're going to define um, a couple of programming languages. So, we can say right here, uh, let uh, programming languages, okay, equal to a new array of programming languages. So, we can say right here something like, uh, let's do Java, let's do Rust, and we can do, uh, let's just choose C++. So now, um, we need to then have a way to, um, you know, uh, store a selected programming language, which can then be selected using a radio group or a radio input. Okay, so right here we can just say something like selected is equal to um, nothing. So let's actually, let's actually have this, uh, you know, undefined by default. So. Here we have our two variables, the programming languages list and also the selected programming language which we're going to be selecting uh, down below inside the template. So in order to achieve this, let's just first output the selected language. So we can say here, you have selected, then we can say right here, uh, selected, or we can say nothing. So, of course, this is, uh, this is just saying if you haven't selected a language, then it's going to output nothing. So, saving this right here, we can see we currently get you have selected nothing. So, that, that's working perfectly fine. Now, let's add a radio group, or sorry, a radio input um, for each one of these programming languages. So, back inside here, let's create a new each loop. And we can say for each uh, programming languages as... So languages as language, okay? We can then just say right inside here, a new label just to contain all of the input fields. So let's try it, let's try it like this. So a new label and we can just say inside here, um, a new input field with a type of radio. So for some reason, the autocomplete is not working but we can type it manually. So we can say input with a type of radio and then we can give this a value of, and it's just gonna simply be the language. And then we can simply then just output the language just like this, so we can see what we are selecting. So now saving this and going inside the browser, we can see, of course, we get this right here. So of course, if I was to attempt to, you know, choose one of these fields, we can see that, of course, it is not working like a standard radio group, um, and also, and we can see, of course, that the selected language isn't being updated. So how do we update this using bind? So we can take advantage of bind group. Okay, so let's go back inside here. Now also I wanna mention, I wanna mention that you can see here that the input fields themselves have the respective values of Rust, C++, right here, and also Java, just up here. But anyway, let's go back inside here now and we're going to use um, bind groups, okay? so. We can say right here for the input type of radio, we can say bind, then we can say group. This group is going to then be selected right there. Okay, so now if I was to save this, it is now going to essentially update the value of selected as we go through. So saving this and going inside the browser, we can see Upon selecting Java, it goes right there. If I choose Rust, it's going to go right there and the same thing works. And we can also see that they are now linked up as a whole group. So you select one and the others become unselected. So that is how to use the input group when it comes to radio buttons. So now we can achieve a similar thing using checkboxes. Okay, so in order for that to work, it's quite straightforward. Uh, we can just simply make a few adjustments. So this time, I want to be able to select multiple languages. So we can change uh, we can we can change this selected right here to instead be an array. So essentially, like I said, this array is going to contain multiple languages, which we're going to select from this list right here. So 
that's going to be an array and then for this uh, for this message we can just say essentially if this selected dot length so basically if we have a length on that selected list okay we can just say selected dot join and we can join those by a comma and a space otherwise we can once again just say nothing so of course if I was to put inside here something like uh, Python okay let's do Python and JavaScript okay let's try that out so now if I was to save this of course we get right here nothing there is an error um, let's just remove all of this right here just so we can you know continue with the example so let's save this and go inside here um, we still have errors let's figure out what it actually is path is undefined so um, let's see here selected dot join uh, you have selected okay so oh okay right <laughs> That was a mistake. Let's try again. Let's save this. Go back inside here. We can see we have selected Python and JavaScript. So essentially, we want to populate this list right here using checkboxes or multiple checkboxes. So let's go down here. We are going to uncomment this and we're going to essentially um, keep this exactly how it is, but this needs to be a checkbox instead. So now we are binding on the group of selected this time um, because they're checkboxes they're going to be in the same group whatever you select from the value here is going to be part of this array so now saving this let's go back inside here we can see upon choosing rust it goes there if i choose c plus plus it goes there also so it is simply treating this as an array this time mm -hmm. as opposed to the previous example with radio groups which of course radio groups only support one value whereas multiple checkboxes are going to support multiple so it makes sense that it's an array instead of a single value okay so let's take this example one step further um, you know using uh, using the same example with the programming languages let's move on to using or explaining um, our select so select drop downs okay so for our drop downs we're going to do like I said the exact same example but um, this one right here is going to instead of course be a select so let's create a new select right here and we can just simply say um, for each programming language we're going to instead have an option okay so an option right here and inside the option uh, the option text it's going to look like this. So this time we don't need to use a bind group. We can simply say bind. Actually, you know what? Um, let's get rid of this just for now. I'll be explaining that very shortly, but we can just place the language inside there. And we're also going to be converting this back into a single value. So let's make this undefined and we can make this back to the original of selected or nothing. So now, um, essentially there we go um, so now essentially um, when I choose a option right here I want to update this selected value so of course if I was to do this right here there's currently no boundings sorry no bindings so we can see of course it is doing this right here so nothing is updating but if I was to now use right up here on the actual select itself if I say bind then value I can then specify selected right there. So now saving this, going back inside the browser, we can see we now get right up here, Java as the default. Because of course, um, the default option is gonna be your first one. Java is first, okay? So since the value selected is nothing, it is going to default to the first one, of course, being Java. If I was to now, you know, go to Rust, it's gonna do Rust, C++, etc. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, of course, if I was to specify here um, something like uh, C++ as my selected, save this, we can see now on page load, it has chosen C++ as the value. And of course, down here as well. So that, so that is how to use it when it comes to select dropdowns. Now also, I forgot to mention a neat trick would be to actually um, uh, similar to uh, a few previous examples, you can actually just uh, uh, name this variable to be value and then you can simply do bind value and since uh, this has the same name it is going to work in the exact same way we can put value right here 
and it's going to work, like I said, in the exact same way. So now saving this, going back inside here, we can see now we get the same result and it's all working as it did prior. So now let's talk about using uh, multiple uh, when it comes to select dropdowns. So for multiple dropdowns, we're going to bring back uh, the array here. So let's make this an array and we can say this value.length then value.join on the empty string and the comma and then we can just say otherwise nothing then right here to support multiple we simply add multiple right here so now of course back inside the browser we can now choose no we can't let's remove path once again save this go back inside here um, did I save yeah there we go so now, um, uh, sorry, now I can choose multiple. So I can do this, I can do Java, hold down my control button, do Rust, and we can see it's working like that. So of course, once again, similar to the checkbox example, um, this is just another way of choosing multiple values. Okay, so this one of course is, uh, you know, doing it with a multiple select. So of course it is going to append the language value to the array of value right up here um, as we choose through our options right there. So um, that is uh, bind groups and multiple bindings. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.